Tonight's headlines are brought to you in part by Coldwell Energy and McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. College students prepare the stage for gubernatorial candidates and their running mates. Also tonight, PSS looks into student learning loss and possible ways to solve it. And Social Security benefits expected to increase soon. In sports, rain won't stop these students for some Saturday fun. Stay with us, we have these stories and more next. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. What we focus on is the actual guidance, the technical assistance in providing clients walk through their business plan, which was an aspect or actually a stipulation by the Boost program that they had to submit one. Uh, Boost has changed life. And it's making people think of ways that they never thought they could contribute back to the CNMI, which is an active, solution to see how they can contribute. Come in and apply. It's, it'd be crazy not to, you know, it's, it's the opportune time. The SBDC is all hands on deck uh, to help you with that business plan and talk to us. Come in and apply. We'll be here to help you. And there you have it. McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Off a day to the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, October 17, 2022. With just two weeks away till early voting for the November general election, gubernatorial candidates take the stage again, this time to present their plans together with their lieutenant governor contender to students and the community. For the next three nights, the Associated Students of the Northern Marianas College will host gubernatorial town hall meetings to ask the candidates for governor and lieutenant governor about issues relating to the economy, environment, health care, workforce development, and education. Student President Anushi Josie says this event is historical and a first for the college. As a young student or as a young voter in the cinema, it is very important to know what these candidates stand on, what their plans are, and how they plan on making the cinema better. So this is for the students. The Town Hall Committee has identified 10 issues and topics they would like each candidate to address. No candidate will have the same question. They will be given four minutes each to deliver their answer and another four if students present a follow-up question. 
Joshi says picking the questions wasn't the easiest task. So we made a Google form and we shared it with the whole, uh, our entire students, committee, and uh, all of our faculty too. And we got a lot of good responses. There were a lot of questions, or I would say around like 100 some questions. And it all came down to picking the important questions that are really, you know, hitting hard and that people kept asking again and again, but through different wording. The event will be live streamed through Facebook and YouTube for any student and community member to watch before they decide who their pick for the next island leader will be. I am excited to see all the answers uh, about what these candidates have to say because um, in the chamber debate, uh, they d didn't really talk about much about the future of education or future of NMC. So this is really about the future of NMC, how they will be planning on supporting NMC and us as students. Uh, so yeah, I just am excited to see what their plans are. Representative Tina Sablon and Representative Leila Staffler will take the stage tonight followed by Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios and Saipan Mayor David Apatang tomorrow night. And lastly, Governor Ralph Torres and Senator Vinny Sablon for Wednesday night. One of the first steps in addressing an issue is to have open dialogue with stakeholders and inform them of the matter and come up with the best solution. That is exactly what PSS is doing. Let's take a look. The Sinemai school system has gathered data over the past school year that circles on students' academic achievement. According to Dr. Rizalyn Liwag, who heads the Accountability, Research, and Evaluation Department under PSS, the most recent report shows a decrease in student accomplishments. It shows in our data that about 30% of our students in ninth grade do not have the credits needed in order for them to graduate on time. So that is one of the data that we are going to discuss today and making sure that um, uh, we will close that gap and ensure that our students graduate on time. Officials say the learning loss is caused by instructional instability during the pandemic. We know that we did hybrid in which students took uh, classes online and at the same time later on we went back to the face-to-face -to -face instructions but because of that uh, instructions were interrupted and so um, so was the learning. This afternoon PSS teachers, staff and administration from middle and high schools gathered at the Saipan Road Resort Taga Hall to tackle the issue and ensure that students receive quality education. For this meeting what we wanted to do is to make sure that we have that conversations between the middle schools and the high schools together so that they could unpack this data and they could take a look at all the skills that the students need to master before they get promoted to the high school and vice versa. So um, they need to have this dialogue with uh, the teachers from middle school and high school work together so that we can address all those uh, the academic needs of the students. Liwag says this won't be the last meeting. PSS plans to hold these types of meetings on a quarterly basis and visit the schools in Tinian and Rota as well. A man is behind bars after slapping a female victim. 37-year-old Michael Garcia is being charged with disturbing the peace and assault and battery after he slapped a female victim. Garcia appeared before Judge Joseph Camacho this morning, who held bail at $1,000. According to court documents, Garcia was angry with the victim, and when she confronted him, Garcia called her names and slapped her. The victim says she was in pain and felt dizzy. She had to call family members to seek police help because she was scared of Garcia. Garcia was remanded back to the Department of Corrections. Social Security benefits will increase beginning next year. 
The United States Social Security Administration announces they will be increasing benefits by 8.7% in 2023. That is an increase of about $68. This substantial cost of living allowance, better known as COLA, is intended to match inflation over the past year. According to Congressman Gregory Kalili Sablon, Social Security benefits contribute $32 million annually, helping over 3,500 beneficiaries in the CNMI. Over 2,000 are retired workers and 1,400 are disabled workers, widows and widowers, spouses and children. Kalili says beneficiaries can expect to see the monthly increase beginning on January 2023. All right, coming up, aspiring businesses starters present their best game plan to a panel. Stay tuned. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. When a crash occurs between a vehicle and a bike, it is the cyclist who is most likely to be injured. Here are things you can do to prevent bicycle injuries and deaths. Every bike ride begins with putting on a helmet, but it is equally as important that you ensure a proper fit so your helmet can best protect you. Drive with the flow, in the same direction as traffic. Obey street signs, signals, and road markings, just like a car. Assume the other person doesn't see you. Look ahead for hazards or situations to avoid that may cause you to fall, like pebbles, potholes, or grates. No texting, listening to music, or using anything that distracts you. Be safe and watch out for students heading back to school. Share the road CNMI. All motorists and cyclists should follow the rules of the road and watch out for each other. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the CNMI Department of Public Safety. What we focus on is the actual guidance, the technical assistance in providing clients walk through their business plan, which was an aspect or actually a stipulation by the Boost program that they had to submit one. Uh, Boost has changed life. And it's making people think of ways that they never thought they could contribute back to the CNMI, which is an active, solution to see how they can contribute come in and apply it's it'd be crazy not to you know it's it's the opportune time the sbdc is all hands on deck uh, to help you with that business plan and talk to us come in and apply we'll be here to help you Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Small businesses made their case for funding and some got a big injection of capital on Friday night. Our Chris Nelson has this story. A back island road shrimp shack, a food delivery business, and a startup payment processor were some of the recipients of seed money to start their business or improve it. The event was held Friday night at the Grand Vrio Hotel in Garapan, kind of like Shark Tank, but Saipan style. Small business startups pitched their ideas to both an audience and a panel of judges. At stake, thousands of dollars of cash to take the business ideas from paper into the community. There were two categories, one that focused on new businesses and another category for existing ones. Judges listened to the best of the best. Over 50 companies submitted plans. They were pared down to several prior to the event. So the pro war goes to drum roll. Any jokes for <laughs> Don't 
Donovan Castro pitched a new business called Eddie Joe's Shrimp Shack, inspired by a shrimp truck on the north shore of Hawaii. Castro graduated from the Culinary Arts Program at the Northern Marianas Trades Institute and wants to get into the shrimp business. The equipment that I need is going to help me get to where we want to be and put Saipan on the map when it comes to shrimp production. Not just for export, exports later on in the future. The goal is to revive the, the shrimp culture in Sinai. Have it be from Luta, the creeks of Tanapak, Talafofu especially, where my bread and butter is. And that's where the goal is to have the shrimp farm with the, in Talafofu, with the new construction of uh, Route 36, if I'm not mistaken. There's no other businesses out there than Kingfisher. So it kind of showcases the shrimp farm. If you're driving past Calavera Cave, it's a nice drive. If you stop on by the Eddie Joe Shrimp Shack, we can entertain you and showcase the farm that we will have, we will have in Talafofo. Mark my words, ladies and gentlemen. Donovan's business now has $20,000 of seed money. This was a long road coming to where I'm at today, and I'm really glad that I have this to continue on my venture for this business and it was an emotional day because I dedicated this business to my late father Edward Tanaka Diaz and my grandfather Jose Q. De Leon Guerrero. Two major, sorry I might, I might break down, sorry. Two of the most important people in my life. Donovan says he plans to launch the business on the back side of the island with a mixture of food and entertainment. We're still in the prototype business but I'm I'm aiming to put my business in the heart of Talapopo. So with Route 36 in construction, it's gonna be in the heart of Talapopo, right at the turn where they're connecting the bridge between Calabara and Talapopo, we're just right there. So, you know, I wanna dedicate, and I wanna reach out to the community and open up small business and let's stimulate our economy. Entertainment is gonna be a big part of this because I really wanna I really want to bring this to a whole different level. You know, we're very, we're so far into the spectrum, like, I want to even have a festival for shrimp to revive that shrimp culture in the CNMI. Second place goes to a fledgling dance studio, Saipan Studio. My business is just a small but growing fast and growing business. And uh, I have like uh, 16 students right now. And uh, uh, I have been teaching dance like the last 10 years and I have to like studying dance when I was four years old yeah what will you use the what will you use the money for I will use the money maybe just uh, uh, hire local dancers and uh, just uh, work with us and then we just uh, change the rooms bigger and uh, get like more students members and to share our love of the dance in the existing business category, Eats Easy won the Audience Choice Award and shared first place. They received $15,000 and the founder, Clint Albert, says he's going to use the money to make version 3 of the location-based app that will work with iPhones. The business gets food from restaurants and stores to people at their home and work. company currently makes over 100 deliveries per day. What are the challenges with your business? All right, so basically we did this with everybody was doubting that we can actually do it because nobody has done it before. So that's a challenge itself. And then we had to figure out if our GPS was actually pinpoint correctly. Believe me, until today, the airport for some reason is pinned in Capitol Hill, which is weird. But it's not us. A lot of people think it's us. It's actually user defined because we use Google Maps. So that's one of the challenges. And plus the weather, plus the roads, crazy roads, rocky roads, slippery roads, and all of that. But we're still here, and we're thankful. Thank you. The food delivery company grew rapidly during the pandemic, and they have been very helpful, especially to people who are homebound. The company tries to get the food from order to your doorstep in about an hour. What is the most popular thing that people want to deliver? Uh, basically, it really depends on on uh, the consumer himself. But I would say obviously KFC is a fast food company, a well-known brand, so they get a lot of deliveries actually. But you have the mom and pop stores like The Shack, who's been with us since the start. Thank you, we love you guys. 
caravans, thank you Salam, and all the other mom and pops uh, restaurants that are run by family. They're pretty famous in our app, and I believe they're pretty famous on island, so you know, it, it, it kind of helps us too. Perry Enos Jr. and Michael Shu from AP Solutions pitched the idea of a local online marketplace that will help consumers pay bills, shop, and get deliveries all in one place. They tied for first and also will receive $15,000 to launch their idea. Seed to Sale, held Friday night. Chris Nelson for the Channel 2 News. Medicaid's presumptive eligibility is extended for another three months. Recipients under the Medicaid presumptive eligibility were expecting to see the end of their insurance this coming January. But the renewal of a public health emergency means a three-month extension for all qualified residents. PE is now set to expire in April 2023. In recent interviews with Hospital Chief Esther Munia, she states as long as the CNMI remains under a public health emergency, presumptive eligibility remains ongoing. This federal health care program was intended to provide insured health care to anyone infected with COVID-19. Currently, an influx of residents have availed of the service and is getting the health care they need. For more information about PE, you may contact the CNMI Medicaid office at 670-664-4880. All right, folks, don't go anywhere because we have sports up next after the break. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. What we focus on is the actual guidance, the technical assistance in providing clients walk through their business plan, which was an aspect or actually a stipulation by the Boost program that they had to submit one. Uh, Boost has changed life. And it's making people think of ways that they never thought they could contribute back to the CNMI, which is an active, solution to see how they can contribute come in and apply it's it'd be crazy not to you know it's it's the opportune time the sbdc is all hands on deck uh, to help you with that business plan and talk to us come in and apply we'll be here to help you Hey, golfers, come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass, and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time, and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about a hundred eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at 287-8537. Tonight, sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live.
Buenas sports fans. Heavy rain didn't stop these runners to compete in the cross country championships on Saturday. Let's take a look. Students from different schools in Saipan, Tinian, and Rota gathered at the Saipan Vegas Golf Field in Chanan Laulau on Saturday morning for the 2022 PSS NMA All School Cross Country Championships. These runners ran the course in the pouring rain. A muddy trail and slippery path made it more challenging to them. In the high school category, Saipan International School topped the girls' division with 14 points. Second place is Agape Christian School with 25 points. And Saipan Southern High School, third place with 73 points. In the boys' division, Agape Christian School scored a total of 17 points for the top place, followed by Mariana's High School with 29 points. And third place is Mount Carmel School with 70 points. In the middle school division, Agape Christian School ruled both the girls' and boys' division. ACS scored 20 team points to win first place in the girls' division. Second place is Saipan International School with 23 points. And third place, Saipan Community School with 41 points. In the boys' division, ACS earned 18 points and bagged first place. Dan Dan Middle School second place with 49 points. And Hopwood Middle School third place with 68 points. Meanwhile, Saipan International School dominated both divisions in the elementary category. SIS scored 16 points in the girls' division to win first place. Second place went to Oli Elementary School with 44 points. And third place is the Brilliant Star School with 69 points. In the boys division, first place SIS garnered 25 points. Agape Christian School second place with 44 points. And Brilliant Star School third place with 46 points. And here are the highlights from this year's Cross Country Championships.
Professor Lynn Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The Foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. And for the KSPN weather report, partly sunny with scattered showers and thunderstorms. Southeast wind around 9 miles per hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms. East southeast wind 7 to 11 miles per hour. High 85, low 76, the humidity 70%. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms. East wind 8 to 11 miles per hour. High 87, low 77, the marine forecast. Gentle southeast winds will prevail through tonight, becoming gentle to moderate east winds by Tuesday. Combined seas of 4 to 5 feet will persist through the week. Southeast wind 10 to 15 knots, wind waves 2 to 3 feet. West swell 3 feet, the sunrise 6.09 a.m., high tide 11.23 p.m., low tide 8.14 p.m., and the sunset 5.55 p.m. And that does it for our Monday night edition of the new sports and weather here in the Marianas. As always, we thank you so much for watching the Channel 2 News. We hope you have a great night and we'll see you on Wednesday.